I'm Rasika Dukil. I'm here with Namrata Rao. Namrata is an editor. She's edited some incredible work in the last 10-15 years. Some of the films she's edited have been my favorite films. Kahani, Ishkia, Band Baja, Varat, Titli, Mrs. Chatterjee vs. Norway most recently. And also some very interesting shows, House of Secrets and Made in Heaven. So Namrata, I just wanted to first ask you a very basic question. What does an editor do? So you know that films are shot not in in one continuity or they're shot as shots. So the person who puts it all together in a way that the story makes sense, it's engaging and it's fun to watch. That's the editor, basically. What tools do you have for editing? Like, how do you edit a film? I mean, of course, you need an editing system like an Avid or Final Cut Pro or a Premiere. But I mean, those are just facilitating systems, I think. The real tool is storytelling and how to tell a story in a way that people are engaged at every point. And it also, I mean, does justice to the story you're telling. Could you talk about a little bit about the process being digital now and how it was manual earlier for people who don't understand how editing is act actually done? So when I started out, we were shooting uh, on 35mm mostly and also editing that on film. That was in film. film school? In film school and even the first five to six years till 2000. Actually, Titli was my last film on film. It was shot on Super 16. Oh, it was? Yeah. Okay, okay. And all the films before that, actually most of the films you've mentioned have all been uh, on film. When you're shooting on film, you shoot to a plan. There is a design and with digital, that has really changed. Of yeah. course, the good thing is that the editor has become more empowered, I feel, because more and more films are getting made on editing table because there's just so much footage. You have more to play around with. You have more to play around with, but it is also very, very tedious. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you want this scene to be? Do you want the actor to be angry and sad or do you want the actor to be only angry so you have all kinds of takes hmm. and then you decide you know what is going best with the story uh, so how does the day-to-day -day process work like the film is being shot what are you doing then so first of course you get the rushes rushes are the the raw material from the camera that comes hmm. and uh, then you have the audio which is recorded separately so that the quality can be controlled. So you have audio and you have video, you want to marry it, right? So one person who matches the clap and syncs the footage, syncs all the scenes. They organize this uh, married, uh, these marriage shots into a bin hmm. where you have all the takes and takes are when, you know, you do a shot once and the director feels that okay it can be better hmm. in terms of performance or in terms of the coordination of all the camera and the background action whatever so you have a few takes sometimes you have a lot of takes so you go through all the takes and you take out pieces which you think are really nice like you know I really like the way you put your hand behind your ear because it made a sort of impression I really like the way you put your hand behind your ear because it made a sort of impression. Hmm. So the first impression you have of the rushes is very important because that's something that's very virgin, right? Like you are the first audience of that rush. So if you have felt something, then you always make a note of it because it helps to go back in the end. Yeah, you because there's so okay. much else that's happened in between. It's hard to remember what you felt when you saw yes. it first. Yes, mm. very much so. And also, it's very hard to stay objective. You've seen everything so many times. You're preempting dialogues. You know that, okay, this scene is going to come after this one. So you're 
ability to see it as a film, as a story that's unfolding is not the same. And which is the reason why editing is so meditative, because you really have to forget the past <laughs> and be in the present moment to really be able to make sense of it. And going back to your question that how does it actually happen? So there are two parts of it, like one is the micro part, which is the scene, hmm. right? So in the scene, you try and make the most of the actor's performance, the space you're in, and of course our performance. Hmm. Like at what point am I talking and we cut to you where you're nodding your head or do we stay on you to see how you're feeling about what I'm saying? So once you do the scene to the best possible performance level, when you put, the all, put all the scenes together and then you do what you have to do to make the story flow. Mm -hmm. So at that stage, at this macro stage, you don't really think about, okay, one particular line or one particular shot. You know, you think about the whole and you try and just remove things that don't work or add things that you feel are missing. So if you've done the micro work, for example, for mm. each scene, and then you do the macro work where mm. you put them together in a flow, would then revisit the micro work yes. to see what happens? Yes, totally. In fact, rushes are the main thing. In my experience, it keeps changing with every cut. In the sense, you know, you do a scene edit, mm. and then you put it all together. Then you re revisit the rushes and you see it, see them differently. You see new things in it because now you understand the story better. So you know exactly what you're looking for. You know, okay, I want her to look vulnerable here. And that's not what I had done. So I go back and make... Not the, what you'd done when you'd first edited first it. First edited it. Because the graph of the character is not still very clear in your head. You have an idea because you've read the script. But to be very, very sure, you go back. So I tend to do that a lot. I keep going back to the rushes and keep changing things to and tweaking them to suit the overall narrative. Was it the, the rawness of you as an editor which was bringing in a flow or was it the, is it the experience? Uh, of course, the flow is there because you're focused. Because I believe like most art, it happens through you. Hmm. It, you are not doing it. Of course, you're doing it, but it is happening through you. You know, you're just the medium hmm. for things to happen. And that is what causes the serendipity on the editing table. That sometimes, you know, like you're not intending, but some truth comes out in the performance and which is not even there in the rushes, you know, but just the way it is joined together or cut together, however you say it, that magic starts to happen. And when that magic happens, you know that, okay, you know, you're like that oxytocin starts flowing or whatever dopamine. Then it's, so it happens with focus. You have to be very, very present with the material and you have to be at it. Even the takes that are not the ones which, which have been the director's first choice or second choice, would you watch all takes or? Yeah, because I think what happens on a shoot, the energy is so different, you know, there's so many people, there's so much happening and you're trying to control all kinds of fires. And so when the director says okay or not okay, it's in that moment. And of course it is the, you know, thing that guides you to go, but oh. sometimes some other takes have the magic. You know, and sometimes just before action, the actor is the most vulnerable. So it's the most real moment, yeah. you know, or after cut when they're still in that emotion and it's really real. Because I've seen that a lot of people, uh, as soon as it says action, something changes, changes. you know, and yeah. that reality sometimes goes away. So you are always trying to make whatever is real. So yeah, you have to go through rushes. I think there's no other way to... I'm so relieved to hear that because sometimes there's this take that I've done and I'm like, oh God, I hope they've marked it because I knew I felt it from within and I hope that they got this one. So it's a relief to hear that. What does your team look like? Who organizes the footage for you? Who goes through all the rushes with you and how does that work? I normally work with only one assistant okay. who sings, sorts uh, the material. And of course, now that there's so much more material, uh, one editor feels, uh, assistant editor feels less. less. So, uh, somebody who also does a first cut. Hmm. But 
I still go through everything. You know, when I meet editors, especially at rap parties <laughs> or things like this, after a project is done and they've been looking at my face every day. Yes. And suddenly I find this person who pops up and says, uh, hi, in the most familiar fashion. <laughs> and I have no idea who this person is. It's usually the editor yeah. because they've lived with you for so long. And then when I meet them, I'm like, oh my God, they've exactly what you said. They've seen me right before action and right after cut, which is my truest self yes. and I feel really <laughs> exposed or, yes. or seen, you know, <laughs> which whatever the case might be. So that's... Yeah, nice. seen, is, seen is more. It's, there's nothing to expose. <laughs> it's, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. How did you get into editing? I studied to be a coder, working in VC++ hmm. and uh, doing those kind of things. So that was what you graduated on. Yes, okay. that's what I did. And I knew that this is not something that's really going down well. I was not enjoying myself at all. And I just had this idea that I want to be an artist, which is quite vague. So I looked for things to do and uh, did random things and eventually landed up in film school. And what were those random things if I may ask? I worked with a painter, organizing her paintings and making like organizing shows, those kind of things, organizing her office. And then I worked with NDTV, where I was a production assistant, okay. which is where I felt that okay, maybe I can study this. It's something that really interests me. But uh, there was a lot of resistance from my parents because of, you know, I mean, I had just completed uh, four years of IT education and got this job in Infosys or somewhere and they were like, okay, uh, you can't do that. So, I don't know. I mean, I thought, okay, I'll take up editing because in case my film career doesn't take off, I'll get a studio job or something. I'll have mm. a salary and mm. that's how I convinced my parents mm. that this is a very technical thing. It's almost like engineering, so let me do it. So, that's how editing really happened. It was in Ki Pinky Ponky. But I don't know, it was just, it changed my life because it opened my mind to so many possibilities. And when I went to film school, I hadn't seen many films, uh, especially English films. I'd seen only Hindi films. I'd only seen Jurassic Park. That was the only English film I'd seen. Even Titanic and all, we used to watch dubbed in Hindi. Huh, I know so that. suddenly, you know, watching these films and it just blew my mind and it just, I think, really opened things up for me. I always believe that editors make the best directors and there are lots of examples of that. Yeah. But uh, uh, I was, in, uh, interestingly enough, wanting to apply to editing when I applied to film school. But later I discovered that editing is just not my scene <laughs> because it's so many, it's a series of decision making. And sometimes yeah. you have to throw out stuff which you really love. Yeah. So how does that work for you? See, kill your darlings is the best thing. I mean, you know, the scene that you love the most when it comes on your table is the one that is surely going out, for sure. Really? Is that something you've made peace with or how? Yeah, it is because, you know, if the film works and more and more people are watching it, I mean, then yeah, it's totally worth it, I think. And it's more of a problem for directors, I think, because they've shot something with so much, you know, attachment. And like in, uh, you know, when I was doing Ladies versus Ricky Behel, there was a scene in which Ranveer goes to the, uh, Ranveer's character goes to Anushka's character and asks her to marry him, which is a big point, right? And then we discovered that it was not holding the, that whole section. And when we completely removed the proposal scene, where he doesn't ask her to marry, it was a much more interesting story. Oh, wow. So sometimes omission is more interesting than an addition. I think as an editor, you have to be detached. So when you choose a project, uh, it's very important that you be aligned with the director. What are you looking for when you uh, meet somebody, when you're going to edit their work? I think the director has to be fun, you know, you're working with that person almost every day. So it has to be fun and I mean, hopefully not like heavy energy and like really taking everything seriously. For me, that is the most important thing. And of course, the script, which is more important than now, even the director. Which one would you sort of assign more importance to if you were to choose? It's, hard, it's hard. To, hard to say. I mean, I have also worked with directors just because I enjoyed working with them. Hmm. and. 
even when the script was not like fully there there for me but would you prefer to work with somebody who's like a micromanager or do you prefer uh, to work with somebody who doesn't really know what they're looking for i mean it's always more fun to work with someone who knows hmm. but of course micromanagement sounds a bit <laughs> but also when they see how involved you are and how much you're bringing to the table they also let go you Learn know i trust. mean uh when i was working on oi lucky with debakar it was my first film hmm. so he was obviously always on the lookout ki pata nahi kya kar rahe hai but slowly i mean then we've worked on so many films and and i can see that there is you have to build that trust hmm. the director is the most vulnerable in an editing room because yeah. sab ho gaya hai abhi now sab chhap gaya hai now you this is what it is you know and you make the most of it from there so it is really a hard space for them and it's also you're seeing all your mistakes you're completely exposed that is exposed <laughs> you know the mistakes you made the decisions you made at the moment so i don't know i feel a lot for the director because of that and i feel at that moment is when i need to just be I there be and shrink. support <laughs> yeah sort of sort of in fact uh, i mean the first film i ever did i was not at all like that i had just come down from film school and i thought i know everything and i have uh, I know just that feeling <laughs> yeah like i'm the underground director and all that that's what i used to think really and okay i'll tell you how to make your film i came with that attitude and i cut out a lot of things changed the structure did a lot and and the director was shocked he was like this is not the film i'm making why are you making your film hmm. you know hmm. this is not what i want to do so we continued that argument for a few days after which he fired me very unceremoniously and asked tell told me don't even come near me for like the you know for a while but it was the best thing that happened to me because i really introspected and i thought that okay my job is not to tell the director how to do his job that's not what it is i really have to see the rushes for what they are non judgmentally you know and i think that perspective shift really changed my craft this my hair all over the place i can see it that's why it's man i keep it ha please okay thank you okay ha Now I'll not touch it. <laughs> But you, didn't you get nominated also for some some award once for your uh, role in LST or something? <laughs> yeah. You did know somewhere And for editing only. I got the film fair for it for editing, no, not for acting. For acting, no, no, you, didn't no, you no. get nominated? No, no. I know you got you getting... got many film fairs, no? Kahani, yeah, and Band Baza, yeah, and LST. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Did you get that? <laughs> 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 that was a rolling guy. We want all this. Oh, good job, guys. Is it a lonely process or you enjoy the solitude of it? I used to find it very lonely in the beginning because I used to get shoot FOMO. <laughs> I'm like, you know, everybody is having so much fun on the shoot and everybody is uh, together. Nobody is having fun. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> me, me there. Okay, shall you know? Uh, I mean, but you're miserable in a group, right? Like, even if there's misery, it's misery in a group. But when, yeah, but when in the edit, you're miserable alone, and sometimes it's the director who's even more miserable than you because you know it's so so much more is at stake for that person. So. It is lonely, but now I really enjoy it. I love the solitude. In fact, I I look forward to it. I miss it when it's not happening. About the footage, about the material, and especially when you work with uh, non-fiction material, you've edited a lot of documentaries. So, what does that do to you, living with those stories and that material for a long time? I personally feel both are very important. A friend of mine had said that you know, documentaries are like breathing in. and fiction is like breathing out because you know you learn from life when you're doing documentary and it is so true because things just happen right and you're just on the lookout of things that have happened whereas in fiction everything is so designed and everything is very coordinated which is also fun but it is you are expressing yourself in a different way So I think the balance for me is very interesting. I really like the rawness of documentary and I like that it pushes me more as a person. I think now in this time when there's so much more footage that is shot in fiction, you know. 
when you're working on a documentary in order to understand the footage better have you ever sort of done your own research work for it or the footage is uh, is enough no no always you always like to try go and down understand. the rabbit hole yeah totally try and understand what this person is about what happened what am i trying to say also create your own take right because mostly you're not there on the shoot so you have to figure out what is it that you feel about it Mm. So, so also figuring that out. Does that involve reading other stuff around yeah. it, and which is yeah. not all, not not only the footage? Yeah, totally, mm, totally. Like when we were doing House of Secrets, I had turned into a detective, <laughs> right? Because I read every single article that was available on what had happened that night. So I had my own theories, and then you know you. go down that rabbit hole okay me if this theory is true or is this true so yeah it completely consumes you between pacing hmm. of a of a story the visual effect of the story and between performance which one do you mostly end up sacrificing visuals i think for me performance and rhythm are tops i think rhythm then performance because if the rhythm is good then even if the performance is slightly substandard it will still pass but if the rhythm is not okay then everything just comes jarring at you how do you create a sense of rhythm for a story is this something that naturally comes to you do you ed- do you use sound while editing or do you keep a soundtrack which will belong to the film or be close to what will belong to the film while you're editing how do you do that so while editing i just cut with dialogues and nothing else and i think the rhythm you definitely have rhythm because you're a performer yourself mm. and an actor so it is that inherent rhythm right what you feel when you listen to music you know when to tap your foot it is somewhere that in a very simplistic way but also a lot of observation i think for me the most important and interesting thing about editing is observation it says like how do people behave and in different kind of situations when do they blink their eyes when do they not when do they keep a straight face you know when people nod sometimes people nod after a while and those kind of things actually really help a scene wow so interesting Yeah like and because these are the subconscious messages that an actor is passing right like if you're not sure about what you're saying it will show on your face hmm. and that is what you want to capture yeah and those other than the dialogues people always react to these subtextual things always like i mean my favorite example is that if you start a shot on the blink of an actor it means something if you end the shot on a blink it means something else you know so it's just these small things people get it so retaining these smaller things or not retaining them would dictate the pace for you yes like so. i think then we can say that the most important thing to determine it is the intention of the scene is there an undercurrent going on between these two characters or are they meeting for the first time then it will be different hmm. or is it that they have a history and now you know they're trying to put it up away so it can be anything hmm. and those things are not always there in the dialogues so you try and capture that that is the most fun thing i think yeah that's the most fun to do as an actor also and i'm so glad somebody's watching it <laughs> <laughs> and noting it and keeping it or not keeping it do you get this feedback often and how how do you respond to it because i hear this very often as general feedback about any film or show is like bahut slow hai ha yeah second half slow tha first half theek tha you know this yeah. is a general kind of yeah. so is that feedback you found there is merit to it or is that something which is disturbing mostly there's always merit to it hmm. but of course people when they watch it they don't always see a very articulate thing hmm. they may not tell you that you know this relationship is not working for me samajh hi nahi aaya maybe hmm. that's not what they say they'll say ki yaar bore ho gaya slow lag raha tha so it's up to you to really take out what they really hmm. mean So I find all these focus group screenings, feedback screenings, friend screenings very very helpful. So and it, did you make changes? Uh, always, always. In fact, in fact, right after the first cut, I, I mean, I would really like to show 
the cut and then you get an idea uh, what is working what is not working what is really not working but who would you show like a fresh a, a first cut to given that the first cut doesn't have music doesn't have all the other work done the reference music is always, always there. there i mean uh, after the first edit is done you put a music to enhance it hmm. not uh, like 500 violins <laughs> type of music but just generally like getting closer to the intention of the scene and of course you still have green screens and all that but uh, it it does give you an idea i think it's a great service these screenings are a really great service yeah how does it make you feel that you're such a big part of the work and to an audience they almost don't even know that something's been edited or mm. even if they understand the concept of editing many think that it's just a line up or it's a very technical job so there's this anecdote that i used to go to this gym and my uh, trainer one salam namaste song was playing and he said that yaar ye chef kya acting karta hai na kitne acche dialogue likhta hai ye maza aa jata hai and it was such a moment for me i was like ye likhta dialogue <laughs> he's like ha aur gana bhi kya acha ga raha hai so somewhere people the actors doing everything everything and that is the magic of cinema so in that sense i feel that it's good that people don't know about editing the less they know they believe in the magic and they really want to believe that this is happening to this person but of course inside the industry you want people to know you know and you, that they do yeah that they do hmm. what are some <laughs> of the common fixes that you have to do in a scene like uh, for example how do you uh, what if the actor was just not being able to do it that day let's say hmm. and the scene is supposed to be really rousing and inspirational for example or hmm. it's supposed to be really intensely dramatic between and the actors just that day hmm. wasn't hmm. wasn't happening like who jim <laughs> i don't know who i'm is. joking <laughs> just no, we're not that. naming people yeah <laughs> we're not naming we're just talking very generally unless it's me. jim <laughs> it's me uh, uh, Usually if a performance doesn't work I think you try and go to the co-actor like you cut ah. to the co-actor at the right moment to get that impact like if I mean yeah, if I've given a rousing it. speech and you know I have an emotional moment from some you know person who's yeah. watching it that adds then music background music is what <laughs> makes a rousing performance also <laughs> sometimes what are some other common like fixes So obviously performance is one big thing then uh, I mean technically sometimes things don't go very well like the sun has gone down because you're shooting I mean for such a long time so then how do you I mean there are so many things that come up in the edit sometimes it's continuity and mostly I don't think people really notice continuity people only react to emotional continuity mm. so if you're crying in the scene and then you're like yay whatever so that will be jarring but if your hand was here and the next time it's not no. there it's not such a big deal but sometimes when you're cutting action and all this kind of continuity becomes, becomes very important problematic. so yeah. then you figure out how to do like it then you don't have the option of taking the shot from a particular point because that yes. action continuity wasn't, wasn't there wasn't there that's why i hate secret scenes i just hate them because it's yeah. impossible to keep continuity in secret scenes yeah. even though it doesn't matter but it's always like So here we were at a very interesting point in the story where you know everything that was going for her has just suddenly fallen apart. One person uh, with from where she was going to find a clue has died and the closest confidant she had also has betrayed her or so it seems at that moment. And that is also the day when the goddess is being you know brought to be installed in homes so it's a it's an interesting start of the whole period of pujo so we thought that okay how do we bring that the pujo for her was the like the height of her loneliness here because now everybody is gone away so we built this whole montage from the b-roll footage there were of course like this really it's my one of my favorite shots where she goes to the window and 
you see that she's looking at the goddess and it's somewhere you know a metaphor for okay now it's it's like a call to action but for me the inspiration also was this one shot which is you know this where it's a big pull focus where you see the goddess and it changes into her standing on the window and with that was the tone for which we went throughout you know and this is of course inspired by charulata where she goes from one window to the other and somewhere it's her moment of you know reckoning that okay now is when i have to get into action so that is where the music changes so it changes right after i mean it's building up building up building up and the moment there is a there is an acceptance in her was when we just got into very different music here so all of this was b roll that was shot but just that okay it's the beginning and she has come you know the goddess has come and the hacking has started and of course there were those plot things that you know she's cleaning everything and and what i had the most fun with was that how to blend it to the music like what we were trying to do was that even though vidya is not here but you come back to her so soon that you feel that she's part of all that is going on you know so that was interesting and of course like to keep the story of rana and her going which was also important that you know she's in katti mode with him she's not talking and he's feeling really bad about it and then in this whole thing i mean we tried to focus a lot on kids and of course just this you know just a visual reminder of her equipment and weapon so this was a totally uh, this was a shot that was actually it happened i mean they were shooting and this family crossed and they were all looking at her that what is happening they are looking at the shoot but it felt like they're looking at her this one woman walking alone and all after that we were just trying to put in a lot of kids because she has lost her kid so just that sense that you know she's seeing kids and families everywhere which is what she is missing so there were kids in every shot so even though as a shot it may not feel anything but overall when you see it all together it gives you that sense that you know she's just walking alone whereas everybody else is in groups and with people there was this crash into the drum hmm. and something much more effective had to come after that hmm. so then you just so this shot really brought the pace down and helped us finish the montage you know and her lonely journey continues so it was great fun to cut it especially young people that want to get a foot into the industry or maybe i have not gone to a film school any advice you have in terms of editing assisting is a great way to do it and just getting your hands dirty that is the best thing i always tell people that younger people who ask me how to get into editing that you have to just keep doing it whatever comes your way you know you don't have to work uh, wait for the perfect project you get your hands dirty you get into practice because it's a practiced craft the more you do the more organic it becomes so you just keep doing it whether they are ads their web shows their corporate films even small videos because everything teaches you a lot thank you so much namrita for being on crew cuz it's lovely talking to you i'm very glad that editors watch so much uh, of a performance and value so much of a performance is very encouraging it puts a lot of pressure also but also very encouraging so thank you lovely to listen to you and i look forward to all your work <laughs> thank you thank you and it's great talking to an actor because you're mostly always you know kind of chipping away at <laughs> actors and it's great to talk yeah do you know any jokes what would you call an arab who drinks whey protein